But we begin tonight with Trey Gowdy, former House Oversight Committee chairman and now a Fox News contributor. Uh, Trey, always good to see you. Thank you for being here tonight. Yes, uh, you know, yes, I want to get actually first to the soundbite that we just played. Uh, you say that whoever is looking into this, in this case it's Mr. Durham, and I want to get your thoughts on that in a minute. But you say they should definitely look at the Brennan Comey FBI emails in uh, in summer of 2016? Uh, December of 2016. December of 2016. Um, you. you know, over the weekend, Senator Graham has uh, really, really um, exercised over the lack of corroboration of this dossier that was used in court filings. So the question then becomes, was it un verified, uncorroborated when you used it, and then when did you begin to corroborate it? And, and what I'm telling Mr. Durham or whoever is going to look into this, I think you'll see late in 2016, well after it had been used, it was still unverified, and the people responsible for it were referring to it as unverified, and one or the other demanded that it be included in the intelligence assessment, which then leaked, which then prompted the discussion you and I are having now yeah. publicly. It, there, there's a statement uh, that just came out this evening that Catherine Herridge has been reporting, and I think we have that we can put on the screen, but the, the gist of it is that that Brennan, John Brennan, is pushing back on all of this today. So clearly he knows that there's now another investigation into it. He heard, of course, Attorney General Barr say that I'm not just interested in the FBI. I'm also interested in the other agencies, which, of course, would point ostensibly at John Brennan, who was the head of the CIA at the time. So, so the statement tonight um, or the finding in the reporting of Catherine Harris tonight says that John Brennan says that he and James Clapper did not want to include the dossier, that it was James Comey, who insisted on including the dossier as they were doing the investigation and also in the intelligence report that was uh, presented to President Trump. What do you think about that, Trey? I think uh, that it's one more place for Mr. Durham to start. That's a pretty easy thing to sort out. Who insisted that the uh, dossier or the unverified material from Chris Steele be included? But Martha, sometimes when you have two people, I can tell you having been in a courtroom, sometimes when two people are blaming each other, they're both right. Uh, it's both of them. Um, and I think it's interesting, mm -hmm. Brennan and Comey right now, the only thing they seem to share is a hatred for Donald Trump. It's going to be interesting if they begin to turn on one another. I've seen the document. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to describe it any more than that. Um, Comey's <laughs> got a better argument than Brennan based on what I've seen. Well, that's interesting. Um, Comey, uh, Brendan was talking about this this afternoon on another cable channel, and he, you know, he's very defensive, obviously, about the need for any further investigation here. Um, and here's what he said about what, what they were, what they were doing, what they were looking into. I think they're just trying to, you know, demonstrate that there was, um, you know, problems with what the Obama administration did as far as as it pursued this investigation. But as you point out, it went through a rigorous due process within the Department of Justice, the FBI. It was approved by the FISA court. It went through all of those steps. You know, the other thing that, that they made uh, that they were emphatic about in that interview was that the FISA court has an extremely high bar. They said there's no way that they would have approved any wiretap, any, you know, surveillance of Carter Page if they didn't have that whole thing down cold. They say they don't just approve these things willy nilly. We've heard differently that they that the bar is actually quite low for approving them. What do you say? Well, the judges are not investigators. They're only as good as the information presented to them, which is why you make the applicant swear out. You swear out an application. And, and when the FBI is telling you that this information has been verified and when they're telling you it's been investigated and it's been corroborated, the judge has to rely on that. They don't get to go conduct their own separate investigations, which is why it's really important to ask the FBI agents and Comey if you verified this information before its use, which we know you did not, but if your position is you did, tell us how. I've seen the spreadsheet, Martha. I have seen each factual assertion listed in that dossier, and then I've seen the FBI's justification. And when you're citing newspaper articles as corroboration for a factual assertion that you have made, you don't need an FBI agent to go do a Google search. And when the name Sidney Blumenthal 
is included as part of your corroboration and you're the world's leading law enforcement agency, you have a problem. And you can blame it on the FISA court if you want to, but I hope Brennan is smart enough to know judges don't investigate. They have to rely on the honest word of the people presenting it to them. And if that honest word is missing, then the judge is going to make the wrong decision. All right. Uh, th there's another report tonight coming in from The New York Times, uh, which suggests, uh, you know, citing sources that are close to Mr. Durham or the Department of Justice or both, uh, that this is just a review, that he's just going to look over the Mueller report and he's going to figure out whether or not there needs to be an investigation. Now, my understanding, and I want to hear what you think about this, is that the reason that they that the DOJ wanted to have a U.S. attorney look into this is because they actually have prosecutorial power. They might be able to actually get to the bottom of this if there is indeed some sort of criminal behavior. And, you know, that, that that's way off at this point. The other difference is that unlike an, uh, an inspector general at an agency, they can look at people who used to work there, not just people who work there. Is that accurate? Uh, yes, ma'am. You put your finger. I'm a big Michael Horowitz fan, but you put your finger on the reason that many of us called for a second special counsel a year ago. Horowitz doesn't have access to the grand jury. He doesn't have access to former employees. He's a wonderful investigator, but he's only as good as the tools he's given. Durham has access to a grand jury, and he has access to search warrants, and he has access to subpoenas, and he's got access to any witness he wants to talk to. So that's your A number one investigation. But, you know, Horowitz yeah. is the one who found the struck page text, and Horowitz is the one who dinged that's Jim right. Comey for that press conference. So the more the merrier. I just, it's been two years now, and I think the country would like to know from someone they can trust what was the factual predicate, not for the Russia investigation, but for the intermelding of the Russia investigation with the Trump campaign. Give us the factual predicate, and we'll decide whether or not it was sufficient or not. Trey, thank you very much. Trey Gowdy, good to see you tonight, yes, sir.